In the latest episode of Hack My Growth, we're taking a look at a topic we haven't discussed in a while, but there's been some new updates around it, and that is local SEO. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If this is your first time watching, or maybe you've been watching a while and you haven't yet hit subscribe, please do so now. In this video, we're talking about local SEO and more specifically, the updates to Google business profiles and the things that you need to do to make sure that you're optimized for local search, but also making sure that you're giving Google all the correct information on your business entity. All right, so in this video, we're taking a look at Google business optimizations and some priorities that we can set around here. While this seems like only something that would apply to local businesses, that's not entirely true because making sure that you have your entities fully optimized, whether it be in the knowledge panel or in the Google business profile, your website and et cetera, all play a huge role. So if you are not a local business, don't ignore Google business and making sure that your profile makes sense. All right, so let's take a look. Just in case you aren't aware, let's talk a little bit about what Google business is. So Google Business used to be known as Google My Business. They took out the My for whatever reason and changed the name and rebranded slightly. Now Google Business, it's an essential tool for local businesses, but like I said, also any other business that wants to claim their profile, attain management rights to it, so actually make some updates and changes to it, and unlock other features like adding different things like products and services and booking and a whole lot more. This is gonna help you with visibility in the maps locations, but it's also gonna help inform Google more about your company, what you do, uh, and how you engage with the community as a whole. So recently Google made some updates to Google Business. So there's a little bit of a new way that you need to actually approach this. And there's also some other information that has been done by other companies and research that are also very important for us to understand. So I'm gonna be sharing with you my top three today. And the three are reviews, they are critically important. Number two is that you need to keep your data up to date inside of your business profile and three we're going to take a look at the new interface and how we can actually update the information because that has changed quite substantially so the first thing we want to talk about is reviews and i'm going to make these links available to you as well because i think the information here is really important to read uh, within the articles and i don't want to paste all of it here uh, but the big thing that we want to talk about is you need to have at least 10 reviews or more but the baseline is 10 and there's significant uh, data that shows based on a study done at SE Roundtable that when you have a minimum of 10 reviews, we see a massive impact in your overall ranking. Now, as you get more, the impact doesn't seem to be as big, but you need to have a baseline of at least 10. Now, another thing to really know about Google reviews is that Google does monitor them and they will re remove them if they think that they're spammy. So it's very important that you look at the quality section of this link here in the support.google article. Uh, they talk about the, the quality of reviews. And then there's another article from Search Center that's talking about like, why are my reviews missing? Because a number of people have been looking at why, why are my reviews gone? Now, lately we did just see Google started to add some of those back, but they do uh, retain the right to remove reviews, especially if they've been flagged uh, as not authentic or spammy. So that's very important that you don't want to spam the system. You want to do it the right way because one, it's going to be more authentic to your community. And two, you're not going to have them removed. You don't have to worry about this. So the best practice for reviews is to ask for them, is to generate a review link for your client. And there's a lot of ways you can do that. Uh, and just say, hey, can you leave me a review? Thanks so much for doing business with us. You can create QR codes. There's so many ways for businesses to get reviews. But especially once you've had a really good interaction with the client, Take that opportunity to say, hey, thank you so much. You know what would really help us out if you went on to Google and you left us a review? I've even seen businesses, local businesses, put kiosks where you can leave reviews within the kiosk. So there's a lot of ways to do this, especially if you want to build up to that baseline of that minimum amount of 10. Uh, this is really important to ask your customers to give you those reviews. The next thing we need to do is keep our NAP accurate. Now, for those of you who are unaware, NAP stands for name, address, and phone number. And having the correct information the same information formatted in the same way across the web is extremely important for your business. So Google business is not a set it and forget it. You don't just load stuff in there one time and then ignore it forever. You need to make sure that you have your proper links for your websites, your proper contact information, your proper event information. Any of the information that you're putting in your website also needs to be put on Google My Business in the correct way. Uh, you also need to make sure that you're choosing the right category. There are times where Google will choose categories for you 
And I've seen some very weird stuff happen where people in categories that make no sense. Now you need to get as close as possible. So the, the most broad category that applies to you, if there's something more specific, choose that. If it's kind of close and it doesn't make total sense, don't choose it. Use the broader category. Be as correct as you can. And you have to make sure that you have consistent information across all your websites, You know whether it's Google Business, Facebook page, your website, use the phone number in the same way, use your address in the same way, make sure that you are consistent. Google has AI that will review these entities and if they notice discrepancies, they may not make that full connection. Again, we are feeding data to a computer, so you need to think about that whole um, garbage in, garbage out, and how that works. As you can see here from Google Business Answers, this is how they source your information. They get it from publicly available information, like website uh, information on other business things. Uh, they get it from licensed data from third parties, other business entities, other directories, things like that. Um, they will use it from factual information. So um, stuff like addresses, phone number, content from photos, reviews, things of that nature. And then they also can get it just from interactions with other local businesses and places. So if you think your profile is inaccurate, it needs to be removed, you can ask them to do that. But if you haven't claimed your profile, then you can't make these changes. So you need to make sure that you claim your profile. It's extremely important that you have um, you have ownership over that because that's your business. That's one of your business's front doors, and especially if you're a local business or somebody that drives people to a location via maps. This is incredibly important. So if you're changing phone numbers or you're changing information on your website, you need to make sure that you're also having that reflected on your Google business property as well. So like I said, there's been an update. Uh, you used to log into a manager section and you could start to see all this information and edit it down there. Today, Google's having you do it straight from search. So let's take a look uh, at what a Google business profile update looks like. All right, so if you own a business profile and you can manage it, you're gonna see this blue check mark right here. Now, all of your information is gonna be uh, right here. It's gonna give your address, where you're located at, your hours. Um, you can edit the business information by clicking this button right here. This is going to open up a new widget. In the past, this used to take you to the back end where you could do all that. Um, from from like a kind of like a dashboard or a tool set this is just hovering right over the the search information so you can add everything in here add everything that makes sense um anything that really applies to your business like we don't have amenities and, and those types of things we don't have menus or any of that so it doesn't really make sense for us to have all that information so we only have the information that makes sense we have a base category as an agency but we also are web designers we're also consultants uh, and we do internet marketing. So all of these apply. We want to make sure that our description is the same or very similar to the one that we're using on our website as well. The contact information is correct, all of that fun stuff. So make sure that you claim it so you can update this information if you need to. You'll also notice over here on the left-hand side, you can edit your profile, which again will take us to what we just looked at. Um, we can also read reviews. We can look at messages. We can add photos. We can look at our performance. This will show us some data about how uh, our, our website or our, our business entity is doing uh, showing up right in there. So all of this now is done through search. You can have Q and A's, edit your services, your products. Everything's going to be right here. You're not going to log into a different entity. You're going to do it straight from search. Uh, also, if you've verified via Search Console, you'll see some of that data straight from here as well. So Google is making Google.com the home for all of these tools. These are some other SEO tools, uh, keywords everywhere. I'll give them a little plug. It's a really cool tool. Um, but as you can see, you're not going to log into the back end. You're going to make updates straight from search. So if it looks different, it's because it is different. You can go down here. You can see all the updates. You can ask for reviews. Uh, what you basically do here is you copy this and you send it to people and this will pop open your reviews page. So you can send it to a client, say, Hey, give me a review. It'll log in. It'll show your information and it's going to pop up and you can give us a review right here. So they've given you a lot of cool tools to work with. You just need to play around here a little bit with this new interface, which is going to show up right within the search results. If you've got any questions on local SEO or enterprise SEO, please comment on this channel. We'd love to continue that conversation with you. And again, we talk a lot about structured data and all that fun stuff there. Owning your Google business is going to be very, very beneficial when it comes to optimizing your entity as well. So make sure that you are taking ownership of this and making the correct updates. So one of the biggest things that can help is having another set of eyes. If you're implementing structured data or a strategic SEO strategy and you need somebody to help give you clarity and focus, 
Um, that's what coaching is all about. So if you're interested in seeing what a, an SEO coaching retainer or an SEO coaching agreement might look like, I do offer free sample sessions and you can sign up. There's going to be a link below in this video. Go ahead and check that out and you can sign up and we can talk for like 15, 20 minutes uh, about your strategy, some of the things you're doing and just get that other set of eyes so that you can really get the clarity and focus you need to get the results you want to get.